Hey there, my name is Dr. Dave Tran with Spinal Missions, and we have Dr. Chad Wolner. He is definitely a man on mission. Uh, his mission is simple, is to put an end to one of the greatest hypocrisies within the chiropractic profession. He poses the questions to all chiropractors. If we understand the inherent truth that health comes from within and not from the external source, then why would it be any different for the health of our practice? Why do so many chiropractors simply seek to throw money at some external source, hoping that some magic pill will somehow save their practice? It definitely won't. So you know, we're definitely going to talk about that this, um, this time with uh, Dr. Chad. Um, so once again, Dr. Chad, thank you so much for, for joining Spinal Missions. Hey, thank you so much, my friend. Appreciate it. I'm glad to be here. Yeah. So, so how'd you get started in chiropractic? You know, um, the, the story is actually kind of funny and I don't know if this is common amongst other chiropractors, but, um, I was actually in school to be a dentist, um, okay. had a good friend of mine who was a mentor, um, and really looked up to him. He was a dentist and he kind of took me under his wing and I kind of did some shadowing with him and I was like, I, I kind of like this. I think this is cool. I think I could totally, um, be a dentist, you know? And, uh, one evening my wife and I were out on a date. We were rear ended and in a car accident and uh, my wife and I had really not had a whole lot of experience with chiropractic before and uh, so uh, after the car accident she literally a couple mornings later her neck was just uh, in, in so much pain she just couldn't move and uh, and I felt completely helpless we had only been married I think like a year and um, and so we took her to urgent care they prescribed her pain medications and muscle relaxers and she immediately knew like this isn't going to do anything for, for my neck. Like that, that's not going to do anything. And so, yeah. um, upon recommendation of a friend of ours, she very reluctantly went to see a chiropractor and I went with her and her experience was nothing like what she had thought it was going to be. It was so like, uh, uh, it was so, uh, life changing for her and for me to be able to see this, that this chiropractor was able to help her when no one else could. Uh, it had a very obviously powerful and profound effect and impact on her and on me. And I started going with her to her appointments and I just kind of saw this whole process and I was just kind of in the back of my mind, like looking at the flow and the pace and kind of his interactions with people. Um, and I was like, man, I really kind of like what he, this guy's doing. I, I think this is really, really cool. And, uh, and it just so happened we were living at Portland in Portland at the time. And we didn't, uh, we didn't even, I didn't even realize it, but, uh, there was a chiropractic college, like just down the road from us. <laughs> and, and so after about, I think like, I don't know, four or five times of going with her, I said, you know, what would you think about us just going and taking a look at the school, you know, entertaining, just, just, just to entertain curiosity, you know? And so we went to the school and we actually, at the, at, when we went toward the school, they let us kind of sit in for a few minutes here and there in some of the lectures. And I saw the things that people were being taught. And, and I, I will never forget just like it, it clicked for me. I was like, these guys are getting taught incredible things. Like I just remember uh, to this day, I remember it was Dr. Partner, one of the professors there at Western States. Mm -hmm. uh, he was teaching biomechanics of the pelvis. And... <laughs> I just remember like my mind exploding. I was like, dude, like these guys are geniuses. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so I kind of turned to my wife and I'm like, what do you think? And she's like, she's like, I don't know. And so we obviously, uh, prayed about it and contemplated it. And, but just ultimately we felt directed that this is where we should go. And so I, um, kind of altered career paths and became a chiropractor. Fast forward. Now, uh, I've been in practice over 10 years, mm -hmm. uh, here in Boise. As soon as we graduated, we moved out here to Boise I spent about a year working as an associate um, for another doc and then uh, started my own practice about a year after that. And, uh, and so here we are now to this day. Yeah. Yeah. That's so, awesome. You know, I mean, it says a lot about, um, you know, uh, all the people that we see and all the different chiropractic practices and you know like you really never know what what positive effect that you will be able to have someone just walking in and never been exposed to chiropractic you know it could create uh, a dr chad Wolner. <laughs> then yeah, uh, no it's kind of crazy yeah so you know you know after being in practice for you know over a decade now um you know do you have any favorite uh, patient testimonies or you know w was there a time that when you really looked at somebody and you saw like the, the power of chiropractic you know change their life 
No, absolutely. There's been, there've been several, but, but the one thing I would say, if I can be totally honest and mm-hmm. transparent with everybody, I'm super guilty, uh, maybe more so than most chiropractors. I, by nature, tend to downplay things. Mm. And I take for granted what we know and what we do, the skills that we have. I do that. And so I have to like really like pause and time out. You know, I, I tend not to overplay things for, for whatever reason. It's just in my nature. And so there's one, there's one story in particular. Uh, there, was a, there was a patient who came in to our clinic a couple years back and she had uh, been told by her doctor she had had numbness in her last two fingers right and it would not go away it was pain and numbness in her in her elbow and 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 down here to her her, her two fingers in her hand the doctor told her it was carpal tunnel syndrome mm. Carpal tunnel syndrome. And I clarified with her. I was like, are you sure? Are you sure you told these two fingers? And she's like, absolutely. He knew it was ring finger and pinky finger. And he told me it was carpal tunnel syndrome and we had to do a carpal tunnel release surgery. And he did it. And lo and behold, nothing happened. Nothing changed. And, um, and it was maddening to me. It was frustrating. And it was like, ah, it was crazy. So, but uh, she had still been suffering and literally within two or three adjustments, we adjusted her neck, we adjusted her shoulder, her elbow, we did some pin and stretch, and, uh, and I mean, complete, complete resolution. I mean, just like that. That was one of my most profound cases. And she was so grateful uh, and, and just, uh, just saying our praises. And, and, but it was just to me that represented, you know, that um, – I think as much as I love chiropractic, I think the thing that chiropractic really shows us patients and or the world is the body is miraculous. It can totally heal itself. It can totally, if if we just assist it in just these slight little ways, um, it can, it can take care of itself and it knows exactly what it needs. It knows exactly what to do. And again, that's something I think, unfortunately, that I take for granted far too often. But that was one case among many cases that I've seen over the years that was just so powerful um, to illustrate that for me anyways. Oh, yeah, 100%. You know, that's amazing. You know, and that's, you know, it just says a lot, you know, just, you know, asking questions, you know, taking time and really listening to her, you know, and, and really serving at your highest, uh, highest level. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, you know, so... So like after being in practice for, for so many years, I mean, what was uh, practice like, you know, in the very beginning? Awful. Um, <laughs> <laughs> honestly, um, you know, in my head for whatever reason, and maybe this is the, maybe the lesson here is to not develop such concrete expectations. Mm. I find that our greatest pain in life comes when uh, we create really concrete expectations. And then when life doesn't match those expectations, it creates a tremendous amount of dissonance and frustration and pain for us. But um, in my mind, for whatever reason, I had this expectation that like, okay, it's going to be hard for about a year. We're going to work for about a year, but then after about a year, things are going to click and the practice is going to do well. I'm going to make six figures a year and it's going to be perfect. It's going to be you know, smooth sailing from there. And after about four years of pain and struggle and suffering, I was like, this is a lot longer than I thought. This is like <laughs> not what I signed on for. I was thinking it was just going to be, you know, a year of, of struggle and challenge. And, and even then uh, the struggle and challenge I had in my mind, wasn't this, <laughs> it wasn't like this hard. And, um, and so that was, that was pretty frustrating to me to see that, you know, that wasn't what I expected that. And, and quite frankly, I got to a point where I was like, this isn't what I signed on for. Yeah. And uh, so at the very beginning, and, and so I, I think that's honestly, truly, I think that's one of the reasons why I'm so passionate about helping and, and working with other chiropractors is because I, I to a very intimate level know what that pain is like, uh, probably more than most, I think. Uh, maybe it's the same for every chiropractor, but for, for me, um, I've seen quite a few docs who their experience with startup looks more like what I originally envisioned where they <laughs> struggle for about a year or so. And then they, and then it clicks, you know, I see these docs or, or some docs who get the right mentorship and the right training right out the gates and they're home free. And I'm like, dang, I wish I would have had that. I, <laughs> I wish I could have gotten that, you know? Um, and so for me that, that, that's what the beginning was like. It was a lot of, of suffering. Uh, and, and unfortunately 
uh, hindsight is twenty twenty. Um, maybe it was needless suffering. Maybe it wasn't. Maybe I, I mean I don't want to say it was needless. I'm sure I learned a lot of valuable lessons. But yeah, those first couple first few years were were painful. Yeah. So. Sure. It, it, yeah. Yeah. So, so at what point um, did it click for you? I mean, did you feel like, okay, you know, I have a, a grasp of, of, of something, you know, and, and, and you know, uh, at what point did you, you feel like, okay, you know, there's something that I'm, I'm learning here and, and then it has shifted your practice. Yeah. Uh, I would say there's been a couple uh, moments for me and most people who know anything about my story probably equate it to funnels. Mm -hmm. And that's certainly a big part of it, a huge part of it, you know, learning, how to use online sales funnels as a method or a means of uh, attracting in high quality new patients into the practice was, was probably, you know, if we were to look at a pie chart, that was probably at least 50%, if not more yeah. of the equation. But I would say to mentorship along the way, and I'm still learning, honestly, it's not like I, I still don't feel like I have arrived. Um, but, um, I feel like mentorship that I've had along the way from other chiropractors who are far better at communicating with patients, mm -hmm. uh, you know, people that, that stand out to me, like a big mentor of mine is a local doc. His name is Dr. Scott Fletcher. Mm -hmm. um, to this day, he had a huge impact on me and helping me understand just that foundation of proper communication with patients. Um, Dr. Stephen Franson is, is an incredible chiropractor, a great mentor of mine. Dr. Brad Glowacki um, is a great doc. Uh, mentor, somebody that I look up to, um, Dr. Alex Vidan, um, a lot of these guys who, who we look at in the profession as, as leaders, um, I think are just really, really good examples to me of people who have helped along the way. And in one way or another, small or big, I think it's all big one, you know, when you really truly look at it, but have influenced me and helped me, uh, with, with, uh, the way that I go about, um, communicating with patients, um, managing my patients, helping clinically with them, uh, et cetera, and, and then obviously running my business. Yeah. Um, those, those have all been huge uh, influences on, on me in terms of where I'm at today. Yeah. I mean, you know, and, and that's super huge. So, I mean, hope everyone has a pen and paper. If not, I'll be, uh, you know, dictating some of this out for everybody else to, who's following along. So, you know, and, and, and you didn't mention about sales funnels. Um, I mean, if, uh, if no one's, you know, haven't heard of what a sales funnel is. I mean, could you, uh, you know, briefly explain what that is? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so a lot of people, I think, unnecessarily overcomplicate what a sales funnel is. You mm -hmm. know, they, th they, they focus, I think, on the technical stuff. Uh, when in reality, we need to, I think, just need to step up, step back a little ways and just look at the, um, look at kind of the big picture from a mile up and then we can kind of dive in a little bit deeper. But the whole idea is like, literally, if you were to think of a funnel, right? The first kind of premise that we have to understand is not everybody in your communicate in, in your community is going to be an ideal candidate for you and your practice. As much as we would like to think that chiropractic is for the whole world, uh, in theory, that's correct. But in reality, in terms of your practice, not everybody's going to be a good fit, right? Mm -hmm. And so when we understand that, then it's a matter of then asking the next, cash, the next question, well, who is a good fit for your practice? And then how do we communicate to those people in such a way that we attract those correct people and at the same token kind of help to block or, or, you know, kind of politely refer those other people or, or, you know, in an automated fashion, get the wrong people out and the right people in, you know, mm, yeah. and that's really what a funnel is all about. It's, it's a series of steps uh, either online or offline or combined um, to where you're able to find who the right people are, who the prospects, we will call those prospects, you know, so you have an, a, a broad audience here. The mm -hmm. next level is prospects of the prospects. Who are the people of those prospects that seem like they would be a good fit? That's another level down. Who of the good fit are people that recognize themselves that they need help is the next level. Uh, who of those people that need help are people that, that, that want help? You know, who are the people that want, you know what I mean? And so each, each level along the way, we're kind of qualifying those people. And so a sales funnel is nothing more than a process, a systemized process for, for walking those people through those steps so that they can identify themselves and you can identify them to ultimately get to a point that by the time they arrive at the door, they've raised their hand and said, yep, I have this problem. 
I know I need help. I know that I want your help because I believe you have the solution I'm looking mm -hmm. for. And ultimately what happens is by the time they get to you, in theory anyways, there's far less resistance because the processes that you've taken them through um, really helps to pre-qualify um, those people um, in, in an effective way so that it just makes your job easier. It makes the process of working with these people far more enjoyable. You don't have to arm wrestle people into care. Um, it just makes it a whole lot easier. And so uh, when I say on and offline, you know, most people don't equate like say a spinal screening to a funnel, but that's, that's what it is. It's, it's, exactly. an old, it's an old school process of a funnel, right? You've got all this random audience here at a health fair and of that random audience, you have a certain percentage who are going to come and engage with you and talk with you. But not everybody that engages with you and talks with you is going to actually get their spine screen. Not all of them are going to want that, you know. So mm -hmm. some of them are going to get their spine screen. Of all that get their spine screen, not all of them are going to care about the results of that spinal screening. But some will, and some will actually engage to the degree that they'll sign up for whatever offer you have, you know. So it's just step, 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 step. So imagine that as the offline version of a funnel. Now you have that online, so you have like a landing page where it says, hey, are you somebody who's struggling with, um, you know, disc problems, sciatica and disc problems, you know? If so, uh, click here, put your name and your email, and we're going to send you our disc problem report, you know, where we're going to show you what the latest research is saying about disc problems. So they sign up, they put a name, email. The next page is a report. They read the report, and then from there you say, hey, we have a special evaluation process. You can come in you know, click this button, they click the button or whatever, you know, so it's just step one, step two, step, you know what I mean? And then along the way, what you're doing more importantly, and this is something that I teach people in terms of the sales funnel is the most important part of it is now that you've got that name and email, you're, you're collecting an audience, you're, you're aggregating or, or curating or creating an audience of people that you can communicate with for free ongoing. So it's not just a matter of, did they sign up for my offer? Oh, no. Oh, crap. Okay. You know, but instead it's like whether they come in and see you or not, you're now aggregating or creating this audience of people, an email list, uh, a Facebook uh, messenger list, mm -hmm. uh, a text message list, whatever communication channels you, you have or you want, um, you know, an audience on Facebook, a Facebook following, a Facebook group, whatever that is, you're creating these audiences that you can now communicate with on a regular basis via blog posts, via Facebook lives, via um, podcasts, via, you know, YouTube videos or, mm -hmm. or programs or shows or whatever you want to, but just creating content to build that audience, build that following, build that attention and trust. And then ultimately uh, that will naturally result in, in more new patients coming through your clinic as that audience builds. So I know that's a lot. I know I kind of like, <laughs> in essence, that's yeah. what a funnel is. That's oh yeah, yeah. Funnel is. exactly. You know, and like and hundred percent, you know, and you know, if, if, if someone's watching this or listening to this right now is just super interested in this uh, just as much as I am, um, I have great news. Uh, Dr. Chad will be joining Spinal Missions uh, in Jamaica over New Year's Eve, that's right. Uh, he's gonna be one of the chiropractors of the Caribbean or Caribbean, depending on what part of the world you're from. Right. <laughs> yeah, and, then, uh, and then, you know, him and several other amazing chiropractic speakers will be talking about just this and, you know, amazing different ways to build your practice on top of going out and we'll be serving the community with chiropractic care uh, as well um, in a five-star all-inclusive resort. So uh, be sure to visit www.chiropractorsofthecaribbean.com. I'm going to be uh, listing all the different ways to get in touch with Dr. Chad uh, somewhere on this uh, area below or above. So, you know, uh, Dr. Chad, you know, I want to thank you so much for, you know, sharing your story, you know, and, and talking about, you know, like how you got started, you know, in all the amazing ways that you're helping chiropractors, you know, build successful practices. And, you know, we're looking forward to, to seeing you down in Jamaica. It's going to be fun, man. Thank you so much for having me here. And, and thanks for the invite to Jamaica. I'm excited to be there. And uh, for those docs who are watching, uh, I am going to put my heart and soul into making sure that you guys uh, not only have an incredible trip uh, in terms of the mission work that you guys are doing, which I think is phenomenal, uh, but I'm going to make sure that I come there prepared to deliver for you guys immense value so that you guys can come away uh, having a very tangible ROI return on your investment for this trip. Um, so you guys will have very uh, actionable steps that you can take to implement in your practice to see uh, immediate results. Um, so I'm just, just know that I'm coming fully prepared to, to deliver for you guys. 
Awesome. Thank you so much, Dr. Chad. And then this is Dr. Dave with Spinal Missions signing off. Bye-bye.